Hello folks, my name is Lobringer and this is my single column tie tutorial. Um, just a quick disclaimer before we start, I'm not looking to grow this channel or upload regular tutorials. I'm not qualified to do that. This tutorial, the idea behind it is really just to put as much information as I can without being overwhelming to allow the Irish community specifically uh, to get an idea for the single column tie and practice it in anticipation of Pierre Rope hopefully starting again in 2021 at some point. Um, there are many ways to tie a single column tie, which is why I'm trying to put all this information into one video. We're going to concentrate on one type of single column tie, um, the one that I have found to be most common in Japanese bondage. So, you know, we're not going to be doing some of real ball lines or anything like that. We're just going to do the most basic, at least in my experience, single column tie for Japanese bondage styles. Um, this tutorial is going to be divided into three parts. First part is going to show you the single column tie. Um, just going to do it, going to show it to you, going to focus on what makes a good single column tie and what you should strive for and what it should look like once it's tied. Second part is going to be common mistakes that I see people do when they're starting out with rope. And the third part is going to be hints and tips. So, bite, use your finger to lead it. Let's keep the bite short. Cross over 90 degrees, Grab the bite, loop, head through, first knot, second loop, complete single column tie. Now, we've got equal tension on the wraps, the knot is serrated can't see anything through it, like if it wasn't serrated enough, you could see, you can see the floor through it. See, that's not tight enough. You serrated nice and good, and you're pulling on each individual thing. But here's a good way to serrate the friction, or the knot, is actually pushing down on it like that, and now you can see that you actually can't see the floor through it. As I said, equal tensions on the wraps, this bite is actually slightly larger than I would like it, but it's still kind of acceptable. Now, let's do that again slowly. So, if you're right-handed, hold the rope with your left hand. If you're left-handed, hold the rope with your right hand and just mirror what I'm doing. But instead of go saying right and left, I'm just gonna say lead hand and whatever, not lead hand. So, we have the bite. Here's how we hold the rope, right? We're holding it with our index and our thumb, like so. Don't have a ton of bite. Keep the bite short. Keeping the bite short will make your life easy. Use your lead hand, index finger. Now, place the back of your secondary hand on the limb that you're tying, just like so. Make this gun shape, right? Make this gun shape and pull the rope through, wrap it around, grab it again with your thumb and index, right? Bring it forward, grab it again with your index finger on your lead hand. Now here's where we do a little gesture of kind of pulling the rope like so. Or again, pull it over. Feed yourself more rope. You can do this by simply letting the tails loose and pulling it through like this. Now, see that I'm going over my two fingers. That's because you always need two fingers distance between the limb and the tie itself for safety. You can see this here, right? And you cross over 90 degrees. And here you can hold everything together. Now, here's a very important thing. At this point, you remove one of your two fingers. And you do this because you need to have enough space to go back in here with your index, grab the bite, 
and pull it under. Make sure that it's flat underneath. Okay, and make sure that you have this little overlap going on here. Now we're here. This is where you do a gesture that I call, well, that everybody calls checking the watch. Okay, you have the bite here, you have the tail here. You do this with your wrist, like as if you were had a watch and you were checking the time, like this. So pull your wrist inwards and you grab the rope and you pull it into a loop. Okay, check your watch, grab the rope, pull it into a loop, right? One more time. There we go. And now grab the bite, use the fingers that are inside the loop to grab the bite, bring it over. And now you have the bite over here and the tail's over here. And just make sure that there's no twists. You pull it like this. Don't do this, okay? Don't, when you're tightening this knot, don't go this way. Don't go parallel with the wraps of the single column tie. Go this direction. Go parallel with the limb, right? Tighten, not too much, right? You just needed to come in contact with the rope. And here, you do the same gesture with the other hand. Check the watch. Pull it into a loop, grab the bite, pull it through, and tighten. Compact, and there we go. Okay, so common mistakes. One com very common mistake that I see people do at the start is their handling. They kind of have a lot of bite, or maybe start with a short bite, but instead of kind of pulling it through, they kind of do this and they let it fall down here and then they try and grab it, and then they pull it through and fall it through again. No, 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 that's complicating your life. It looks inelegant and it just, it's creating extra work for you. Keep the bite short, this helps you. Put your hand down, as I showed you earlier in this gun, way and just use your finger to pull the rope and you can do this movement in, if you need more of it and then from here you can keep time another common mistake that i see people do is when they get here they get at this point and this is where you cross over right i see people keeping two fingers underneath you got to remove one finger because if you don't if i leave two fingers in here when i put the third finger in here trying to get this i'm gonna make my life hard if you remove a finger you got plenty of space to just come through and grab the bite now another mistake that sometimes people do is they get confused with this movement and they end up doing the opposite they end up doing the loop the other way apart from the fact that this is actually kind of hard to do like but this actually makes you end up with a different knot. So remember, you're not pulling it that way. You're pulling it this way. You can tell when it's the right direction because the tails will align with the point where you cross over the bite. See, this is where the bite crosses over. And this is the correct direction for the loop. Now, another thing that people do is making a loose knot. Now again, as I showed you at the start, making a compact knot is not about getting here and like, like tightening it as hard as possible. Just tighten it enough that it kind of starts crunching the bands underneath. Then do your second loop. And once you're here, tighten, yeah. Also just kind of give it a little squeeze. And this, this should feel like wood. Okay, that's the feeling should, that it should be hard. Now, another thing, another last common mistake, if you will, that I see people do is, let's say we're here. We do our crossover, get one finger out so we can get our index in. I see people sometimes um, doing this, you know, they get the loop, blah, blah, blah. And then they try and tighten this way, right? They, they kind of move the bite and the tail so that they're parallel 
with the wraps and this just kind of crunches everything in a weird way or if you do it this way it still works but what you want is this you want to keep the bite and the tails perpendicular to the wraps Okay, for some quick hints and tips. Again, I've already kind of peppered them throughout the tutorial, but you know, keep your bite short and keep it short at every time, at all times. You know, just, it's gonna be more manageable. The less slack and rope hanging around you have to manage, the easier your life is gonna be. The other hint is use your finger to lead. Again, we said right, left, and you know, if you're left-handed, it's going to be your left hand. If you're right hand, it's going to be your right hand. But either way, whichever hand you're leading with, just the one finger, you know. There you go. See? Make your life easy. Learn how to handle rope in a way that makes your life easy. And makes it simple for you to do these things. Another hint that blew my mind when I uh, when I discovered it, thanks to Braxis actually, is do this. You got your lead hand, and you got the hand that you're actually holding the rope with. Here's how you hold the rope. Don't just hold it like that. Stick your pinky finger in between the rope, right, and then hold it uh, between your index and thumb. This way. When you feed, I don't know if you can see, but you can hear, we have some twisty rope, right? It happens, ropes get twisted. But if you've got your pinky in between the rope, as you feed the rope, as you lead it with your lead hand's index, you can see that my pinky is straightening it out. It's taking care of all those twists, of all those twists. Makes my life, again, a lot easier. See, I always have my pinky in between the rope. Okay. I'd like to focus on something um, something interesting as well. Well, something kind of important when it comes to handling the single column tie. Once we get here and we do our crossover, I can hold the whole, t the whole thing with just one finger, you know? Like, I'm not pulling anything, I'm not holding on here, holding on here, I'm afraid that it might fall apart or something like that. I just have one finger underneath there, right? Once I do my, my loop. Kind of all stays together pretty neat. But even when you cross over, let's try it again. So, once you cross over, you know, there's no need to hold things too much. You're just using one hand. I've already removed one of the two fingers that was originally in. I can go grab it. I'm still holding it, just here. And then when I have to do my loop, just another finger holding the whole thing together. And I do the loop. I go in and I switch again. Again, just one finger. And there we are. Okay, so one last hint that doesn't have to do specifically with single column ties, but I thought I would show you anyway. Um, whichever way you bundle your rope, this doesn't matter. It is a matter of preference. But usually good practice is to have the bite sticking out somewhat. So you can kind of tell where it is. You can see it there, and you can see it there. It's the longest part. But whichever way you bundle your rope, 
to help keep things neat and tidy, undo your bundle, grab the bite, stick your index in between the rope, like we did with our pinky and the hints, and just run it through. Run it through, run it through, run it through until you reach the tails. Make sure that they're nice and even. And then run it through again, this time a little bit slower, and just feel with your thumb that the two sides of the rope are not getting out of uh, phase, if you will, until you find the bite again. Then do your thing where you put the pinky through, grab it, and proceed to tie. And this will help straighten out the rope, get rid of any twists and all of that before you start tying so you don't have to deal with them when you're actually doing your tie. Okay, now, if there's one thing that I'd like you folks to take away from this tutorial is don't practice the single column tie for hours on end. There's no point. You're going to get frustrated. Um, you're going to not progress very fast or it's not going to feel like you're progressing very fast at all and you're just going to get tired of it. Instead, just do one single column tie a day. Take 10, 15 minutes, depending at the start, it's probably going to take you longer, but then as you progress, it's going to take you less time. Just take 10 minutes out of your day, either in the morning or in the evening, whenever you have time, whenever you feel like it, and tie one single column tie that you're happy with. This might mean starting and stopping, trying again a couple of times, but just tie one single column tie a day that you're happy with. Doing this once a day, as opposed to practicing for one, two, three hours a week, uh, all in one go, is gonna be way more beneficial to building muscle memory and micro gestures that will help you with a single column tie. Now, I'm talking to you right now. I'm not looking at what I'm doing, right? Not looking at what I'm doing at all, I'm not really paying attention. And yet, I'm tying a single column tie. It's not even that I'm not even looking at the single column tie, that I'm talking to you, right? This is not because I'm some god or something like that. Ooh, a little peek there. It's because I did that um, for a whole year. I tied one single column tie a day. And uh, I just built the muscle memory. And now, I don't know if you can see, Perfect single column tie. Small bite, stable, hard knot, equal tensions. You can do this. All you gotta do is tie one good single column tie a day. You'll have it in no time. Best of luck. I'm actually gonna redo the single column tie while talking to you because uh, I want you to be able to see my face, see that I'm not actually looking at what I'm doing but I also want you to see the gestures at the same time, to see what I'm actually doing here uh, while I'm talking to you, while I'm not paying attention to the actual single column tie that I'm tying. And voila, there we go. Small bite, equal tensions.